been and visited this neighborhood. Um, and I, it's a sister city of Los Angeles. So we hurt, we grieve with you. And we know that people listening have relatives uh, and loved ones in Beirut right now that are undergoing this incredible difficulty this time. So our prayers, our thoughts, um, and symbolically tonight, I worked with the mayor to make sure that City Hall will be lit in the colors of the Lebanese flag to honor what folks are going through over in Beirut, our sister city. So uh, tonight and tomorrow night, you can look at City Hall and it'll be lit with the beautiful colors of red and green of the Beirut, uh, the Lebanese flag. Um, so much has happened in the last seven years uh, that I've been privileged to be the council member representing the 13th district, uh, which includes all of Little Armenia. Back in 2015, we dedicated the Armenian Genocide Square at the intersection of Hollywood and Western. The only sign anywhere of any city that actually has the term genocide on the public right of way, and it is a city sign that acknowledges the tragedy of the Armenian Genocide. Um, so I'm going to go down a list of things we've been working on collectively, some more recent, some currently underway, and some that we've accomplished already. We're expanding the Metro Bike Share program throughout the district and East Hollywood and Hollywood. We've worked with LA Metro to identify several bike share locations in East Hollywood. Now, what we have is a pay-as-you-go system so that we can travel with alternate modes of transportation. When I moved to Los Angeles back in 1982 as a very young man, I only had a bicycle for two years. I discovered Los Angeles on two wheels for two years, went to work, went to social gatherings. So in that sense, I suppose I was a pioneer. But all these years later, there are thousands of bicyclists now. Now, you don't have to own a bike. You can uh, use a bike, uh, bike metro uh, ride share. We have a station set up at Normandy and Hollywood, Normandy and Sunset. And then just this week, uh, George verified that we opened one at Hollywood and Western, uh, which is, you know, these are hubs uh, where there are uh, densities of people who can now take advantage of this amenity. Next, I wanna talk about something that you can see throughout Los Angeles way back in the day the city built these pedestrian tunnels going underneath our major boulevards. They've been closed off by and large uh, for the most part for decades now. Um, the tunnels were locked and closed off because of safety uh, issues. So now we're reclaiming the space where the tunnels that are locked up and has a chain link fence over them, we're now uh, uh, removing them essentially. We're not destroying the tunnels, so someday if we decide that we can open them up again, then we have that option. But right now, we're going to reclaim the sidewalks, and we're gonna put the sidewalk back over the tunnel openings, remove the obstructions, the fences. Uh, it makes it safer for pedestrians and uh, visuals for motorists as well that can't, uh, won't have a, a blocked vision as they drive down the street. So we're removing uh, tunnels at New Hampshire and Hollywood right by uh, Barnes Doll Art Park. And then another one at Santa Monica and Normandy, which you have to squeeze by as a pedestrian to get by that, those two tunnels anyway. So it'll make the sidewalk wider and safer and make the neighborhood safer for pedestrians at the same time. So uh, that's coming and will be uh, uh, installed by next year, by 2021. Um, the documents uh, are the, uh, the, in place, the construction crew was identified and construction will begin soon. Um, I mentioned Hollyhock House. Uh, Hollyhock House is the crown jewel of the culture of all of Los Angeles, if not all of California. And it's right there in Little Armenia. It's a historic site. In fact, uh, just last year, it was designated, designated as the only UNESCO World Heritage Sites in all of Los Angeles a very unique designation for the entire state of California. Not only is it in the 13th district of Los Angeles, but it is in Little Armenia. Uh, so it is one of the amenities that make Los Angeles great. I couldn't be more proud of the work that my team did working with uh, the Department of Cultural Affairs uh, and others to create this designation. UNESCO stands for United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. 
Sites that receive a UNESCO World Heritage designation are ones that have outstanding universal value and protect, uh, protect world, cultural, and natural heritage. Since we opened Hollyhock House, which was uh, completely uh, redone uh, to the tune of millions of dollars uh, back in 2015, lines formed around the block 24 seven. So the visitations for Hollyhock House are way up. Now we're restoring what's called Residence A, which essentially was the carriage house to the main house. One of the last remaining Frank Lloyd Wright design structures that had no protections whatsoever. So my office identified funding that's now undergoing renovation as well. So once we get through this horrible pandemic and we slowly return to what will be a new normal, please come by and visit Hollyhock House and the whole entire grounds. You can visit virtually right now uh, by, uh, by logging onto our website. We can help connect you virtually. Um, so I want to compliment Jeffrey Herr, the curator of Hollyhock House, who helped with his UNESCO designation as well. So we have the millions of dollars going toward the repairs, as I mentioned, and it's coming along beautifully. Next, something really important for anyone who lives in Little Armenia, Hollywood, or Hollywood and beyond. You see, I think, on the screen, Target. Yes, Target at Sunset and Western is opening soon. Um, it underwent a series of lawsuits um, over the years. The city was victorious ultimately, and so Target is now being completed. Um, in addition to providing an enhanced shopping experience for the tens of thousands of people within walking distance of this store, Target will provide new jobs, local jobs, some for transitional aged youth who are experiencing homelessness by working with Covenant House and other nonprofits that serve uh, people experiencing homelessness. So it's a jobs pipeline as well, and my office is directly involved in making those connections so that we can get the store open and get people to work again. Um, next, this is really something that we're very proud of. You see a picture of the groundbreaking of what will be the Little Armenia Gateway Project. It is a monument to Armenian culture, Armenian history, to the Little Armenia community, right there on Hollywood Boulevard at the 101 North off-ramp. Uh, and there's a picture of the groundbreaking and an image of what that beautiful monument gateway will look like. It is a welcoming to Little Armenia, uh, and nothing like this has been done in the city of Los Angeles, especially on Caltrans property. So last October, I was proud to be joined by Bureau of Street Services, the Department of Cultural Affairs, and the Atanian Arts Center, who, is, uh, who we uh, have uh, brought aboard to design and build this monument through a publicly juried process that happened years ago. Uh, this is a project spearheaded by my office um, to honor and salute the achievements of the Armenian American community here in Los Angeles. Now, the journey. I want folks to understand that we literally had to move heaven and earth to make this happen. Caltrans had to modify their entire model for the state of California in order to put this on Caltrans property. So uh, if you want to know the, the bloody history of what got us there to build this uh, so that we could shine a spotlight on this incredible community, check in with George, Star, or Marisol, and they'll give you the gory details. But the good news is it's being built. It's going to be an incredible amenity. We will have a wonderful celebration once we finish uh, this structure. I, I'm really grateful for uh, to Tanya Picasso from the Department of Cultural Affairs who really did the consistent heavy lifting on the department's part to help push this forward. We were an unbreakable team who linked arms and said, we're building this no matter what we have to do or what obstacles we have to face, and we're going to do it. Um, and we're going to hear from Tanya in a, a little bit, I think. Um, support during COVID. Okay, we, we have this unprecedented pandemic. Everyone is affected negatively by it, and life is difficult right now. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Um, right now, we're supporting our seniors um, across the city. We have a very present and, and very... Uh, very active senior community 
uh, in Little Armenia and the 13th District. Uh, during the beginning weeks of COVID-19 and the crises, my office has worked consistently to deliver toiletries, hand sanitizers, and other supplies to seniors in need who are the most vulnerable to COVID-19 uh, across the board. Uh, we've also been working with the mayor's office. We provided uh, COVID testing kits at these sites. Uh, Little Armenia is home to several assisted living and senior facilities. So we wanna protect our seniors and that work continues right now. Um, we also did the East Hollywood Produce Box Giveaway, and we did that by working with uh, the, the Neighborhood Council and the East Hollywood Neighborhood Council, that is. That project is continuing as well. Uh, we partnered with the Neighborhood Council and Rick's Produce to provide these free boxes of fresh produce to all stakeholders who need it in Little Armenia uh, and the greater East Hollywood area. Special hats off to the East Hollywood Neighborhood Council who really is devoted and dedicated to this endeavor as volunteers. Uh, they're on a mission to help people no matter how they found themselves in the circumstances. And we are honored to work with East Hollywood Neighbor Council and Rick's Produce to keep this program going. Um, since April, there have been over seven events, uh, which hundreds of produce boxes have been given away. And we look forward to partnering, uh, continuing that partnership. Please stay in touch with my office and George Hacopians uh, for the next produce uh, box giveaways there at the site of Rick's Produce. Uh, these projects and initiatives are among the many ways my office is making a difference in Little Armenia. And of course, complemented by the efforts of my Los Angeles uh, uh, Conservation Corps clean team and community organizer, Sylvan De La Cruz. Um, and so here is a, a picture of what my clean team does on a regular basis. We do nearly 900 small and large and in-between projects a year across the 13th district, a priority of mine. I identified funds early on. We've been doing this since July of 2013. We go out five days a week and do projects. Here's one right here that shows a before uh, and after picture where we trimmed some trees, removed some bulky items, um, and there you have the before and after. Uh, so if you have a site that needs attention, contact us so we can put it on the list so we can mitigate uh, the, the issue. Well, we did weed and litter abatement at 1627 North Mariposa, all the way to Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, we, we, we mulched the tree wells uh, and we watered six of the trees. And um, we also did litter abatement on North Alexandria from Hollywood to Sunset. And we're doing more of that right now today as well. And just a reminder, we're gonna take some questions after I finish this presentation. We hear from some of our guests. Um, my office partners constantly with several organizations, empowers organizations, assists, and we really are a partnership in Little Armenia. One of our incredible partners is the Armenian Relief Society. Um, and Tamar can tell you, uh, I'm sorry, Talar can tell you all about the incredible work they do. We've been working with them since day one. So I'd like to introduce Talar Ein Tablian from the Armenian Relief Society of the Mer chapter. Uh, and she's gonna tell a little bit about uh, the work that they do in the community. And I can't imagine Little Armenia without the Relief Society. So, so please Talar, take over from here. Thank you, council member. Um, I'd like to say um, a very big thank you for allowing our organization to participate in this event. Uh, we've always appreciated our partnership. And um, just to give some background about our organization, the Armenian Relief Society was uh, founded in 1910. We're a nonprofit humanitarian organization. And this year we will be uh, marking our 110th anniversary. Um, the Armenian Relief Society Social Services was established back in 1979 because uh, the organization realized there was a large influx of immigrants and refugees in the communities um, with, with demonstrated social employment, acculturation, and various human services needs. Our mission is to uh, work toward improving the standard of living of individuals and families who are in need and to help meet growing and changing societal needs. We've been operating for four decades and we provide uh, comprehensive social services uh, targeted at low-income individuals and families. 
uh, including older and disabled adults as well and vulnerable populations, many of, you, many of whom have limited English language capability. Uh, currently, uh, we have three offices and one of our busiest is actually in the 13th district. Um, the services we provide are wide ranging. Um, they vary from assisting clients with housing issues, particularly low income and Section 8 related or senior housing, providing access and linkages to public benefits. Um, this includes the CalFresh program, um, CAPI, SSI, uh, helping with enrollments for in-home supportive services, um, lately, of course, with the pandemic, we've seen an increase in the demand to help with um, unemployment benefits related issues. We also provide employment services, um, helping community members um, get access to jobs or develop their job skills, uh, make referrals and placements, and also follow up with them to see if they're retaining their empl employment. Um, other issues uh, vary from transportation related, to uh, assistance with telecommunication and utility programs, public assistance and discounts that are out there for the public, um, as well as assistance to individuals or families who are homeless um, or on the brink of homelessness. We've seen a rising need there and we do our best in our capacity and our resources to help provide them with any kind of immediate and emergency aid that they need. Um, we are also a hub for providing information and referrals to other community resources that are out there. Um, we have a lot of um, clients who reach out to us in need of mental health support services, domestic violence, substance abuse. So um, we try to be mindful to be able to um, get clients to the services that they're able to access for, for those specific areas. Uh, the community actually has known us as a one-stop center there. And so um, they really uh, come to us for any of their needs, um, even beyond the ones that I've mentioned here just a few moments ago. Uh, while the services that we've been providing in this community have always been in demand, of course, the, the pandemic um, caused for a further increase in services. And so um, we realize and are aware that it's had a tremendous impact on uh, vulnerable populations, as the council member um, mentioned earlier, um, including low-income households and our older adults uh, who are especially vulnerable and are at risk as well. We've um, fortunately been able to assure that our services have continued throughout the pandemic uninterrupted, and we've placed a great deal of focus on helping to raise awareness about health and safety precautions uh, so our community is aware um, providing information on available city resources that would be of benefit to them. Uh, for example, uh, senior meals or the emergency renters assistance program. Um, we've been um, smoothly able to continue providing these services uh, to those most at, at risk. And one of the main areas of focus that we also um, placed a great deal of emphasis on was ensuring food security for our older adults. Uh, we partnered with a number of community organizations as soon as the Safe Bread Home order was issued um, in order to help provide food bags. And we were able to do so with volunteers to, over, to hundreds of households in the district. Uh, at this time, um, while we continuously accepted walk-in appointment, uh, walk-ins uh, from the public as well, we've had to temporarily adjust our services because of COVID. And so um, we are uh, seeing clients on an appointment basis only and through telephone support just to try to be able to um, mitigate any um, health uh, related issues and with their health and uh, safety in mind as well. Um, our services have been uh, provided ongoing year round and on a full time basis. Uh, we're proud through um, the council members support in the city of LA uh, we have one full-time case manager who is dedicated to providing these services to the community. Um, we're located at 1205 North Vermont, and our offices can be reached um, during regular business hours at 323-669-0471, and also by email, services at arswestusa.org. Um, I'd like to say on behalf of the Armenian Relief Society, we're a proud provider of these services 
um, in this community for decades, and we look forward to continuing to doing so. Uh, we believe we are making a difference there for our community members, and, and we'd like to continue doing so in the years to come, absolutely. Thank you, council member, and uh, for the city, for this uh, longtime partnership and support, we appreciate it. You bet, Talar, thank you, and we're, we're so uh, proud of our partnership with you as well. And for everyone who's listening, it's organizations like the Armenian Relief Society uh, that are in the trenches in all of our neighborhoods doing this incredible work. So I urge you to get to know them if you haven't heard of them before. And there are ways you can support and help support their efforts as well by contacting them with information that Talar just gave you. So thank you so much. Um, next, I'd like to turn it over to Tanya Picasso of the Department of Cultural Affairs, uh, back to the Armenian Gateway. Uh, which is something we're just really excited about. So much work has gone into this. So, you know, every successful project requires a small army or a team to make it happen. When one component of that team is removed, the thing can fall apart very quickly. One critical component of this success has been Tanya. So, Tanya, if you could talk a little bit about it, we'd appreciate it. Thank you, council member. That's um, very, very nice. Um, when you say that this is an unbreakable team, I, I think that is so, so very true. I have the distinct honor of being part of this project since its inception in 2014, and we're now in 2020. Um, so it's been, it's been a great privilege to be part of your incredible staff who's just been wonderful. When you talk about determination and persistence, 8013, you guys are awesome. Um, so a little bit of background, I just wanted to share that when the council member uh, introduced this motion to create public art in the Little Armenian neighborhood, we knew at DCA that we would take a collective community-driven approach to inform the design and produce something that would commemorate the rich history of the American Amer Armenian American community. This project is a response to the community's request to have the city commission an artwork to on that honors that ancestry and that heritage at the heart of Little Armenia. In 2015, Council District 13 and DCA conducted a community survey that asked for input on the type of artwork that would best be suited for this concept. And as a result, a cultural gateway was identified to signify a warm welcome to all visitors in Little Armenia and the city of Los Angeles while fostering a sense of cultural pride and community connection. So what was the process for selecting uh, the artist? Well, in 2016, DCA released a nationwide request for qualifications for professional artists, artist teams, and arts organizations to, to design and fabricate and produce and oversee the installation of the project. We convened a professional peer panel um, to review the 33 submissions that we received. From there, um, the panel comprised of a six person panel of uh, community stakeholders, representatives from CD13, as well as professional artists were able to review and score the applicants. A total of five artists and artist teams were selected to produce the proposal um, for the Little Armenia Gateway project. The artists did receive an honorarium and they had six weeks to meet with the city to develop and fine tune the proposals based on technical information that was provided as well as the vision statement. A second community meeting was then held with the five designs um, where the five designs were, were showcased to the public and the people could give real input and feedback on the designs. And this information was gathered and shared with a panel that met a third and final time in March of 2017 the 2014, 15, 16, 17, 17, we selected the artist. And the awarded artist, as Councilmember O'Farrell mentioned, is the Tanian Art Center based in Glendale, comprised of father and son team, Gore and uh, Vladimir Atanian, as well as Armin Kazanchian. Um, they are an amazing team, and the commission was based on um, their aesthetic quality, conceptual strength, and site relevance, as well as community engagement. They really kind of addressed that vision, that need that the community was seeking um, with this cultural gateway marker. So um, the artist team, they were, they used this, uh, not only their cultural heritage as members of the Armenian community, but they really just kind of drilled down on the artistic concept um, to create something that was elegant, as you hopefully saw in the renderings, 
um, timeless and appropriate for not only the Armenian American community, but for all Angelinos. The public artwork is comprised of three elements. And the first is an 18 foot tall archway, um, the Darbaz, the piece is called Darbaz and Karas. And it is made from authentic Armenian red tufa stone, literally transported here from Armenia, which is really wonderful. That has original typography on the top of the gateway that says Little Armenia to name the artwork. The second component is an eight foot tall ceramic glazed tile amphora or the karas with Armenian and modern motifs. And the third is the design concrete footprints with landscape features. So all of this is um, will be located on, on that site that the council member mentions on Hollywood and Venice off the 101 off ramp. And um, this project has been a true collaboration. We've had the, the joy of not only collaborating with the council member's office, but with the rest of the city family, um, Bureau of Street Services, um, our colleagues in Bureau of Street Lighting, GSD, Department of Transportation, um, Bureau of Engineering, as well as Caltrans and the community, of course, um, who's been involved in every phase of the project. Um, the, the project right now, there is activity there. It's an active construction site. However, due to the pandemic, we have had a few schedule setbacks and we've had to pivot in order to make sure that safety measures are in place. But the artist team is out there right now. They've been doing their additional site preparation and the project is um, scheduled to be fully installed by the spring of 2021. So we're really looking forward to it. And uh, with that, I'll pass it back to the council member. Tanya, thank you so much. Um, as you're describing this incredible artwork, I'm reflecting on how important visibility is. Visibility is so important. Representation is so important. So now when this is done, and we'll celebrate it in the spring, hopefully in time for the, the march, the annual genocide march on April 24th. Um, people will know that this area means something, that it has, uh, that people in the area care and that representation matters. So thank you so much DCA and all the departments that you mentioned. It definitely is a labor of love for all involved. Um, so I'm now gonna talk about our next topic and that is the importance of small business. We know that entrepreneurs who immigrate to Los Angeles, sometimes the very first thing they do is set up a small business. We know that's really important in Little Armenia. It's really important across the whole 13th district and for that matter, the whole city. We know that small businesses employ about three quarters of all workers in Los Angeles. Restaurants are especially hard hit and about one out of every 10 workers in the city work in a restaurant or a food service industry of some sort. So my office identified $1 million. We reprioritized that money that would have been spent for something like a streetscape or uh, a public works or infrastructure improvement project. We reprioritized it the moment the pandemic hit and we put a million dollars for renters and a million dollars for small businesses. Um, and so that is launching very soon. In fact, today, for the first time, you can get information on my website, and then there will be an open enrollment period on August 13th until the 18th to access up to $5,000 for small businesses located within the boundaries of the district I represent. That's the 13th district. So this small business grant program uh, is very important. And so joining us today, from our partner to help roll this out, the Economic and Workforce Development Department. Um, we have Daisy, um, and Daisy is here, Daisy Hernandez, to kind of explain a little bit about how that's gonna work. So uh, I'd like to invite Daisy to say a few words about this uh, small business grant program. Hi, good morning, everyone. Good morning, council member. Thank you for inviting me to be here and participate in this forum. I'm glad to be here and to share the information about this exciting new program. To the audience, thank you for being on the call. Information about the grant program is, like council member said, it's hard off the presses, and um, I hope that you will find it helpful. As we know, the coronavirus impact had a tremendous impact on businesses everywhere, and definitely the businesses in the city and businesses in Council District 13. And um, 
Council Member O'Farrell recognizes that there is an urgent need to provide additional funding to help businesses in his district. So as he set up this um, this grant program, um, we we again are excited to to partner with him to implement this program and 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 assist the businesses in his district. Now um, the emergency relief program uh, will provide cash grants of up to five thousand dollars to qualifying small businesses located and operating in Council District 13. Um, who can apply? Well, micro entrepreneurs, small business owners, and nonprofit organizations that are located in Council District 13 that have been impacted by COVID 19 are eligible to apply. Uh, the business operation must be physically in a commercial use building, so a brick and mortar location is, is uh, a required criteria for the grant. Um, the business um, has to have uh, a minimum of three employees and up to 26 employees with a gross um, annual revenue of uh, between 25000 and $1 million. And that's going to be based on the most recent tax return available, whether it's 2018 or 2019 tax returns. Um, very importantly, we'd like to uh, let the business owners know that in order to apply, they, they do need to have a city business registration tax certificate that's in good standing and that was issued uh, in before March um, 2020. Now what can the funds be used for? Um, uh, we, the funds can be used to pay for payroll, um, whether it's for the payroll or sick time payroll. Um, uh, we can use uh, the funds also for rent, utilities, insurance, just working capital in general. All the, the, the basically the funds that businesses need in order to remain in business, remain, keep their doors open. Um, one important criteria is that only one application per business owner will be considered. So if you are a business owner that has multiple locations, we will only be able to accept one application from you. Um, we're excited. We, we are going to be kicking, rolling out the program uh, next week, as council members said, on August 13th. The application will be open for for five days. Um, we will be providing technical assistance uh, if you need help um, completing the application, uh, putting together the documents that you will need. We have partnered with Acelera Financial. Uh, they're a consulting firm who will be helping us with, with the technical assistance provision through the application selection process. Um, Acelera Financial can be reached at uh, 213-410-5099, uh, and they are, ready, they are ready to start taking calls to assist you through the application process. Um, the, the application portal will open on Monday, August, I'm sorry, on Thursday, August 13th, and will close on Monday, August 17th. Um, and uh, the businesses will be selected through a um, lottery system. So as you complete your application, you will receive a confirmation that the application has been received and a, a lottery selection will be completed among the applications that are have all the documents that are required. So it's very important that you include the uh, all the documents that the application is is requiring, so that you are not disqualified for an incomplete application. And again, I'd like to remind everyone we will have the technical assistance that that's needed that you may need in order to complete the application. Um, and again, thank you for having me here, and I'll, and I'll be here in case there's questions after um, um, the the forum uh, complete ends. Thank you, Council Member. Daisy, thank you so much. Um, and so in addition to the number that Daisy provided you, if you have questions, you can log on to my website. We can connect you as well directly uh, to get your questions answered by logging on to cd13.com, cd13.com. Now, before we take some questions, I want to thank all of you for joining us. Uh, please sign up for my weekly uh, electronic newsletter on cd13.com, as I mentioned. For information on our next council member in your corner. We're going to be doing these regularly now uh, because we want to get all the news and information to help you, uh, whatever neighborhood you're in. And let me just close by saying, have a great day. Thank you. Now let's take some questions. 
Council Member, you and Council President Martinez spearheaded the $100 million rent subsidy for renters affected by COVID-19. Mm -hmm. What is the status of this program and what more can be done? Thank you. Thank you that, for that question. So uh, the rent subsidy program, the emergency rent subsidy program, um, both Nuri Martinez, our council president, and myself had already established $1 million funds to help renters within our own council districts. Now, that $1 million fund is going to help about 500 households just in the 13th district alone. That is in addition to the $100 million that we established through the same process that's going to be citywide. So residents of the 13th district will have a bite at that apple in addition to the $1 million that I provided previously. We felt it was very important. We know that people um, are underemployed or unemployed because of COVID-19, because of the business, uh, businesses that have closed. There's great hardship in, in the city. And we know that. So we felt it was really important um, to prioritize and spend some of the emergency uh, COVID-19 relief money from Congress that they allocated through the CARES Act for this fund. It's the beginning. I want to do more. I've made it really clear because it was oversubscribed. The fund in general, in addition to the 500 households in the 13th, the fund in general will help about 50,000 plus households across the city. But we know that a little over 200,000 applications were received. I'd like to keep this fund going as long as we have funding to keep it going. So I'm looking at that right now, in addition to advocating for additional relief from the state and the federal government. I've sponsored several resolutions, have been in contact with both houses of Congress, including Nancy Pelosi's office, and then our state house and Senate as well, so that we can cobble together funding at the local, state, and federal level. This is an ongoing effort, and so will looking to supplement this fund be an ongoing effort. We need to keep people housed and fed during the pandemic and long after it's over, keep people on a strong financial footing. Councilmember, I am a senior living in Little Armenia. I'd like to know what the status is of the Senior Meals Program and what's happening to make sure we're providing uh, for seniors during this time. That's a great question. Thank you so much, uh, whoever asked that question. We know that seniors have it more difficult than almost anyone. They're more at risk for COVID-19. Um, they're on fixed incomes. So we really want to help our seniors. The state did a grant for a senior meal program, and it wasn't really, no pun intended here, but it wasn't fully baked. And so it ran into some limitations out of the gate. I've asked for a report back on how we can refine that program so we can get meals more quickly to more households that have seniors who need the relief. So that'll be heard in council and will reform the way the city is dispensing that program so we can you know, help augment meals for all seniors, whether you're living uh, in senior living or you're living in a household where you're the only senior. We wanna make sure you have access to fresh, healthy food. That's what this effort is all about. Thank you. Good question. Another question. I've lived in this neighborhood for some time and have seen new developments coming into the area. While I'm happy to see improvements, I'm wondering what can be done to address uh, affordable housing in the city. Affordable housing comes up everywhere I go. Um, from the very first moment I took office, I set to work on making sure that affordable housing was part of every development deal or a project that got approved through the city process where they were asking for some sort of variance um, or some sort of conditional use permit. I've been able to negotiate about 20% affordable uh, in Hollywood, in Little Armenia. A lot of the brand new projects that you see going up, these brand new shiny buildings, have a set aside of covenanted affordable housing within them. So it might look like so what some call luxury housing, but uh, almost all of these projects have an affordable housing component to them, sometimes exceeding 20%. Now, what does covenant affordable housing mean? It means that you're not going to pay more than 30% of your household income for rent. 
So in addition to fighting to protect what we already have in terms of the rent stabilization ordinance, those units, we're working on protecting them. And with the new projects, we're negotiating covenanted affordable housing as well. And in Hollywood, I'm very proud that we've kept that 20% of all housing affordable. And we've done that across the district as well. But Hollywood, it gets all the attention. So uh, if you have any questions, call, contact my office. If you have any questions about projects that you see, please let us know and we can answer them for you. I'd like to request uh, a cleanup in my neighborhood on my block. How do I requ uh, request a cleanup from your office? Great. Okay, so you know about my, um, my regular uh, cleanups through my clean team that I formed back in 2013. So please submit your requests by phone uh, at 213-207-3015. Uh, you can ask for Sylvan De La Cruz. He's my community organizer. He oversees this entire program. And like I said, we go out five times a week and do large and small projects. You can also log on to my website, cd13.com, and you can get my e-newsletter, and you can also submit requests through my website. So those are good ways to do it, and we look forward to hearing from you. Council member, what have you been doing and what can you do to address pedestrian safety, both in East Hollywood and across the district? Pedestrian safety. Um, pedestrian safety is my number one transit priority. I wanna make sure that our public rights of way are safer for people to walk. Walking is healthy. It helps neighborhoods become vibrant. You feel better when you walk which is why I'm really focused on streetscape improvements and projects like the stairway, the under so the street stairway project where we can widen the sidewalks and make it safer for visibility. So we've, we've done uh, streetscape projects which make it safer for pedestrians in Little Armenia specifically, the entire stretch of Hollywood Boulevard from roughly Vermont all the way to the 101 freeway. Those projects will continue um, and we're looking for more ways to improve the public right of way. Shade trees, uh, ADA ramps for, for uh, accessibility so you don't trip over a curb uh, to, to have to step over it. Um, it's really important that we put as many bells and whistles that are visible to motorists so they slow down when they're in a pedestrian area. Um, I strive to make all of the 13th district safer for pedestrians and school kids and seniors especially need these protections. All right, and I think that that uh, is all the time we have for questions. And please, you can continue submitting questions um, to my office, and we'll answer all of them, even if I couldn't answer all of them right now, right here. But please do stay engaged. Um, I look forward to seeing you at the next council member in your corner, the virtual version. And I really uh, want to thank all the panelists today. We love working with you. We appreciate so deeply your devotion to community and community building uh, we're your partners um, and your friends and you help make my district and the city a better place in which to live and live safely so everyone be well um, and let's keep praying for beirut uh, and um, you know let's have a, a wonderful afternoon thank you so much we'll see you next time